in Wargaming, we're, we've explored this idea of the tar pit. And what I've pushed up to my channel to framework this under the Wargaming Tactics playlist are some of these kind of universal Wargaming rules, these universal Wargaming tactica that when you lay over your army, or in the case of God tier, the mission or the warbands, you can utilize these to help advance the game and put you in a position to win. So within that framework, I'm just going to elaborate a little bit because this really plays into how we're utilizing Rogery and um, as both a warband and followers and the tactica of it because it is a perfect, great, great example. The tar pit in Wargaming. The tar pit is this unit or a bunch of units working in a certain area that you are just going to camp them. You are going to park them at a certain area, not only area denial, but anything that's thrown against that, that tar pit unit or that group is just going to get bogged down turn after turn after turn. It just can absorb a lot of damage. It can absorb a lot of dice thrown at it to the point where your opponent is like, wait, I'm now like two or three turns in and I haven't really done any damage I'm, I'm I'm wasting I'm wasting units or or in the case of God tier warbands and followers trying to take this out. I should have just been ignoring it in the first place. Bonus points if they pile more and more and more on. It's literally a tar pit sucking everything in and keeping it in place. So what we see with this warband is a great example of a tar pit warband. How the champion and the followers work together. Champions and followers. Well, this is a um, you know this is a bigger tactical discussion, especially when we look at the various um, colors. If they're a slayer, right? How that thing plays out. But sometimes what you see with some war bands is the champion wants to work completely independent of the followers. Then you've got some war bands where the followers can work with the champion, but it's not necessary. Then you have a few that need to be around and work with the champion, almost as if they are one, um, one complete group. Rorty and the dwarves, they want to work together. They want to be close and next to each other. And given their life and given their armor value, especially that you can potentially buff that up just with the individual followers and champion but if you have some synergy playing two or three war bands to buff it to increase that armor stat to boost that to keep that life up that's where things get crazy this unit can just absorb massive a massive amounts of dice damage almost to the point where you say was it even worth it so what i see is turn one going as fast as I can, depending on the mission. For the most part, I'm not going to get to the pile of tears and I'm not going to be planting that objective. That's okay. Turn two, I'm going to be in there possibly planting an objective flag, claiming those pile of tears, possibly knocking down an opponent's banner. But with the honor guard, just staying in place, using it to block off an area of tears using it next to um, a pile of tiers to this way attack possible champions there or followers and just sit there and camp, absolutely camp. Use the armor value. Agility is nothing. Use that armor value, boost that armor value, and just soak up and absorb those shots. What I find um, also is the recruit action. Most, I don't want, well, not even most, many of the um, the war bands, I find myself not really recruiting that often because I don't want to burn a champion ability. And middle or end of game where things might start getting a little bit tighter depending on how I did in the earlier turns or the other war bands are in play if my opponent has um, numerous yellows, do I, do I want to recruit followers only to have them killed and give up points? So sometimes with the followers, I'll utilize them, but by mid to end game, I almost don't want to bring them back. Depends on the war band, depends on the mission. With Rorty and the Dwarves, I'm always bringing back followers because I'm generating just that tar pit, that tar pit, generate, generate, generate. I want to keep that pressure there, and I want to suck in more of my opponents. So an interesting 
aspect in that one of the strategies with God tier would be dice mechanics. I want to generate massive amounts of dice. I want to buff those dice potentially more. And then I want to, um, I want to hex or curse you to bring down your attributes so I can pile on the dice and kill you. Hopefully to do it with a little bit of style. But with this war band, I want to just plant. I want to tar pit. I want to armor up. And I want you to soak in more and more damage. I want you to pile in more followers. I want you to pile in two champions and, and try to leverage that. That, I find, is how it really, really plays tactically as a tar pit type unit.